Welcome to Computer Science 320, 2014 Winter 2, Midterm 2, Practice Problem Screencast number 6.4. We are working on this problem right here. Give a recurrence relation T of n, modeling the runtime of this algorithm. That's, that's the algorithm that we just worked with up above. But we don't need to solve the recurrence. Now, it's really important to note that this is not yet a memoized algorithm. This is not yet a dynamic programming algorithm. It's just a recursive algorithm. So when we make a recursive call, how much does it cost? Well, with memoization, we usually call it, count the recursive call as costing constant time. And then we sum up the cost across all of the subproblems. And the same goes for dynamic programming. But here, the cost of the recursive call, well, we'll be creating t of something. When we make the recursive call, it's described by t of the problem size in the recursive call. So we just need to uh, divide up this problem and figure out how much time it takes. We need a base case. Uh, this is clearly the base case up here. And that base case takes constant time to run. And the base case is when high minus low plus 1 is equal to 0. We'll just let high minus low plus 1 be n. So let n equal to be equal to high minus low plus 1. So that'll make it easier to do the analysis. In that case, our base case, t of 0, is equal to constant time. Now what about t of n otherwise? Well, how many recursive calls do we make? And check it out, we make a lot of recursive calls. Okay, don't be tempted to say, oh, there's two recursive calls, because there's two recursive calls written here. This is a program, right? Programs can loop. Programs can do all kinds of things. And this program does loop. It actually makes one recursive call for each element of this portion of the array. So it's actually going to add up the costs of a whole bunch of recursive calls i equals 1 to n of, well, when i is equal to 1, when we're looking at the first element, when, when i is equal to low, this subarray will be of size 0, right? So that's going to be t of i minus 1, that's the left call, plus t of the rest of the array goes on the other side except the root. So it's n minus i. When we add together n minus i plus i minus 1, that gives us n minus 1. So that's good. We're working on all of the elements except one, the root element. So these are recursive calls. That all belongs inside of that summation. Okay. Now outside of the summation, separately, we also need to add in the amount of work we're doing on the call. Well, just the maintenance on this loop storing the left cost, say, each time through the array, updating i each time through the array. All of that takes constant time per iteration, and there are n iterations. So that alone takes linear time. As we talked about in the previous problem, if we really compute this sum each time through the loop, we're actually going to take n squared time uh, total counted across all the iterations, because we're taking linear time in any one iteration. But because we've set it up so that we're calculating the sum of all the frequencies of all of the nodes once, and then each time through the loop we're just subtracting out an individual one of those frequencies from that total, we can just reuse the total over and over again, and we can imagine hoisting this, so hoist this, out of the loop. By the way, if you have a good compiler, it might figure that out all on its own. It might hoist that computation out of the loop all on its own, and you would find yourself getting better runtime than you expected. I wouldn't count on it, though. You might want to hoist it yourself. So we'll just assume that we're going to have some constant times n here, and in fact, I'm going to be really sloppy with my notation and say that we're adding on a theta n term. We're adding on some function that comes from this class of theta n. So linear additional time. And this is a good recurrence. There's actually a variety of ways we could simplify this recurrence. So for example, we can split this summation up. And what you're going to find is that this left term is going to go from 0 up to n minus 1. And this right term is going to go from n minus 1 down to 0. So they're actually the same sum, just repeated twice. So we could change this, make it a little bit simpler. So it is 2 times the summation i equals 0 to n minus 1 of t of i. And then we can add in this theta n term. 
So if you felt like making that slightly cleaner way of expressing it, that might be nice. In some ways, though, it's not cleaner, right? The one on the left, it's relatively easy to see, and not easy necessarily, but it's relatively easy to see how it came from the original code, whereas it's not obvious how the one on the right came from the original code. So they both have their place, and either one is a good recurrence.